Hello, today I would like to show you the work of Kazuyo Sejima and Ryan Shizawa in their office SANA. They are architects based in Japan, in Tokyo. In the year 2002, they won a competition to design the new museum in New York in the Bowery area where I'm currently standing. The project is in a very difficult context. It is in the Bowery area, which is between Soho, the Lower East Side in Manhattan, and it's between uh, houses which don't allow it to expand on the site. The site was rather compressed, so the architects had to build in height. They found an ingenious solution by stacking seven boxes. They call them the, the bento boxes. So they essentially stack seven volumes on the top of each other. The lowest volume is the only transparent one, which is where we have the entrance, the lobby, the reception, and the cafeteria. Above that, we have three floors of art galleries. Then uh, we have the study space, where I'm currently standing, with one of the few points where we can see actually the city from the gallery. On the upper floor, we have uh, the office areas and then a floor with uh, panoramic views around the city. On the top floors, we have some more offices and also technical spaces. The architects had to design in a very small space and the gallery usually needs a wider space, bigger spans and more space for their artworks. They were able to provide galleries of different sizes because they uh, use volumes with different size. When they stack the volumes to the sides, they provide light to enter from the sides and come down to the art gallery and the objects. That uh, allows on one side to have uh, light coming from the top, so not having direct light coming from the facades and from the windows on the art objects, which is very beneficial for an art gallery. On the other side, that allows to have opaque facades in the perimeter. That is a statement that the architects wanted to have. They wanted people to be enclosed, they wanted people to be immersed in the art, so to not have distractions with views in the exterior. It is a brave and uh, slightly controversial uh, solution. You are standing in a place with one of the best panoramic views in the city, at the same time you're closing the facade and you're isolating yourself from uh, the perimeter and from the views uh, to the city. They used very unique cladding to cover the exterior of the building. You can see here this aluminum mesh which on one side protects us from the sun because it's facing down and on the other side it allows us to look down to the street. If we look at the sky, we see very little of it because the mesh is oriented not up but down. On the other, and then when we look down to the street, we see the cars, we see the, the pedestrians and we see the life of the street. So it's a really unique uh, solution. This cladding provides this homogeneous wrapping of the facade. So the facade is very minimalist. You see the seven boxes on top of each other and then all of them being covered by this mesh. However, the mesh uh, creates a very unique uh, light and very unique effect in the facade. The mesh reflects the sun, so when we stand down in the facade, we see the mesh actually shining during the day. At night, the mesh is lit from the bottom, so it creates this vibration and effect in the facade that people can see either from the street or from any of the surrounding buildings. The project was built with a metal structure. As you can see here, we have uh, steel pillars right behind me uh, in correspondence to the perimeter. It's a gallery, so it, didn't, it needed space that doesn't have any structure in the interior. The structure is only in the core, which is in the central part, and then in the perimeter. Steel structure allowed for faster construction and also for larger spans. When we have steel construction other than concrete, we can cover much bigger spaces with uh, thinner 
slabs and uh, thinner trusses. The floors are built out of concrete and the concrete is exposed so when we walk we can actually see the concrete right below us. The ceilings have this interesting cladding on the ground floor. When we are in the lobby we see the ceiling being covered with another mesh similar to the one we, we have in the facade. So it creates this very ambiguous effect of uh, the uh, membrane that protects us, that protects the uh, structure and the ceiling right above us. The architects aimed for minimalist design and they are known for this minimalist approach. For example, in the museum in Toledo that they designed, they built a museum that is in which all the walls are made out of glass. So in a way we walk through this sequence of reflection of curved spaces of glass facades and it's a little bit like a wonderland and the mirrored glass because the more glass we put in front of each other, the more reflection it uh, creates. Here, there wasn't a space for that much glass or uh, for that many reflections. So instead of that, they used the reflections in the perimeter of the facade. The space in the interior, it's kept quite simple and, and minimalist because first there wasn't much of a budget to make uh, more out of it and second they wanted to provide uh, protagonism or to give protagonism to the artworks that are shown in the gallery. The architecture is silent, the architecture reduced to almost nothing, almost as if we are looking at a building by the German architect Mies van der Rohe who they certainly were inspired by for this project. As you watch this tape and listen to my explanation of some of the pieces, uh, I want you to remember that it doesn't cover or encompass the whole body of my work, that you're only seeing um, sort of a very arbitrary selection. The building is a very unique addition to New York and to this neighborhood. It livens up the street and it attracts a lot of people to visit the Bowery area. I invite you to also come and see it and to look further into the work of Kazuyo Sejima and Rui Nishizawa.